Welcome to our daily news program broadcast to you on Canal Algeria. Let's start off with today's major headlines. The National Victory Day, coinciding with March 19th, is widely celebrated by the Algerian people with a staunch attachment to the principles of the Glorious Revolution War. The local production of insulin intended to hospital use is officially launched in Algeria by Saidal Group in Constantine province, targeting self-sufficiency in the near future. And Fiat cars are available on the national market starting from today. Six models are suggested to the Algerian customers. And the national manager is optimistic regarding the Desert Warriors' qualification to the next African Cup of Nations contest. Good evening and welcome back. We kick off our news with a momentous event, namely the Victory Day coinciding with March 19th, which was celebrated by our diaspora settled abroad. The French capital was marked with a massive participation of Algerians, all gathered to reiterate their attachment to their homeland and to the principles of our revolution war. Mini Sakubash with the details. diaspora expressed their attachment to their homeland and the glorious revolution alongside the sacrifices of our valiant martyrs. We've crossed 600 kilometers and slept here. All this for our country and for the president of the republic. We are all with you and we support our country. This is truly the day of victory. Our people affirm that the military, the president and the state are fundamental pillars for the success of our country. We all stand together and recall the sacrifices of our martyrs. We will always be present. Long live Algeria. We are all gathered here today to send a message to our country, President and Army General Shingriha. We support you all. May God help you. And Tahir Al Jazeera. I wish the Algerian people a happy victory day. Algeria will forever be free and independent. We fully trust our president. God bless him. A joyful atmosphere prevailed among Algerians. Laughter, songs, dances were all around to celebrate the victory of their country, raise the flag high and proud, and saying no to any form of division. There is no place for traitors in the land of martyrs. Nous avons toujours combattu les gens qui ne veulent que le chaos en Algérie. We've always fought people that wanted chaos in our country. We are here today on this memorable day to defend the unity of Algeria and the Algerian nation. I am here to support Algeria so that it can be stable for all Algerians. We want prosperity for our country. Algerians should all stand together to push our country forward. Algerians present today have a special place for Algeria in their hearts. They will forever support their country. Algerians are ready to do whatever they can to safeguard their sovereignty and dignity. It is an honor for the entire diaspora settled in Europe to be present here and support our country during this event. Long live Algeria. These are Algeria's sons who will forever cherish their country and bring support to build a strong new Algeria. Here we see the future with hope while cherishing our glorious history. And for their part, our nationals settled in Berlin, Germany, expressed their strong attachment to their country as well as their full readiness to participate in the edification process of the new Algeria.
On the same occasion, many historical and cultural ceremonies were organized throughout the country in order to celebrate this important day. In Bumerdas province, the Minister of Mujahideen, Eider Biga, chaired the official festivities held under the slogan Anniversary of Victory, Determination, Unity and Triumph, and that in the presence of the revolutionary family and the representatives of civil society organizations. The festivities began with the laying of a wreath of flowers at the Martyr's Monument and the recitation of the Fariha or the opening chapter of the Holy Quran on the memory of our valiant martyrs. On this occasion, the war veterans minister indicated indicated that the choosing of Bumerdas province to host this year's festivities is dictated by the richness of its revolutionary memory and history. The Victory Day was also celebrated at the premises of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad in the presence of the Foreign Affairs Minister Ahmed Attaf and the high-ranking officials of the Ministry of Mujahideen. On this occasion, the Foreign Minister officially launched the Ministry's platform. In a different story, the 100% national insulin production finally launched in Constantine Seidel unit, amounting to 1 million pounds in 2023. The product is intended for hospital use, according to the unit's director. A story by Najah Liyar. Seidel unit starts the production of insulin in Constantine province. This hospital use insulin that's 100% Algerian will be produced in the next few months. 4 million units of 5 mm and 10 mm containers of human insulin per year to meet the national needs. We launched insulin for hospital use production in full process and therefore from the raw material to the final product. With this achievement, the Seidel Group and the Algerian pharmaceutical industry will make a qualitative leap and enshrine the principle of health and pharmaceutical sovereignty. This achievement is a part of the public authorities' efforts to improve the health care of patients by ensuring the availability of this basic medicine which was imported. The Constantine factory will eventually produce 4 million units of insulin per year. The Saida Group will start producing other types of human insulin in the future, including insulin pens to meet the national market needs. The launch of insulin production is a new stage during which we also plan to start the production of the insulin analog at the end of 2024. As a reminder, the Saida Group has eight production sites totaling a capacity of 250 million units per year of 200 various pharmaceutical products spread over 20 therapeutic classes. Still with the good news, the Fiat cars are available on the national market starting from today. Yet the ultimate target is the full manufacturing of this brand here in Algeria via a gradual process. Report by Najah Diyar. Here are six models of Fiat brand available starting from today on the Algerian market. There are six models being displayed to the Algerian customers. Fiat 500 that costs 2,600,000 dinars. There's also Fiat 500X that costs 3,700,000 dinars with all taxes included. As well as the third model with 2,990,000 dinars. Algeria represents a key market with promising export prospects in the future. Algeria's market fits very well with our production plans. We started with symbolic products, but more innovative and adopted to the local market products are coming. This operation reflects the government's determination to allow citizens to own a vehicle of the best quality. La determination. Pursuant to the President of the Republic's instructions, the government launched Fiat cars in Algeria. On this occasion, I would like to congratulate Fiat executives. Thanks to their tenacity and comprehension, we all could achieve these good results today. And now we are waiting for the production of the first car in the factory, due to be installed in Oran province. The industry minister reviewed 11 approval requests out of 35 subscribers who obtained prior license. In a different activity, the Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad Minister Ahmed Attaf received on Sunday the Deputy General Director of the International Organization for Migration, Amy Pope, who is the run-in to, ha to head this UN organization. The discussions tackled the prospects of consolidating the role of the IOM in the continuation of its mission, which, is primarily, which aims primarily to secure a human and organized management of migrations according to a global approach 
approach based on legality and international cooperation. And the Deputy General Director of the International Organization for Migration, Amy Hope, was equally received by the Interior Minister, Brahim Murad. The two parties discussed several files, including their organization's prerogatives, namely the, those concerning the human dimension of migration issues. And the project concerning energy transition as part of the Green Municipalities project is renewed. The signing of the agreement took place between the Ministry of Interior and the German Agency for International Cooperation. The ceremony was held under the supervision of the Minister of the Sector, Brahim Rad, and the German Ambassador to Algeria, Elizabeth Wolbers. It is worth noting that the new operations will extend until the end of 2024 with an additional amount of 3.8 million euros. In other news, an agreement was signed between the Ministry of Culture and Arts and the Sahrawi Ministry of Culture in quest of strengthening cultural cooperation and the creation of a national Sahrawi theatre. This took place during the visit carried out by the Minister of the Sector, Soraya Muruji, to the Sahrawi refugee camps in Bujdur. This denotes once again Algeria's and the population and the Algerian people's support to all forms of resistance, a noble position that was held by the Minister of Culture of Western Sahara. And the Spaniards called on once again their government to review its stand concerning Western Sahara. They demonstrated in front of the Foreign Affairs Ministry in Madrid to urge the Spanish cabinet to back this fair cause, betrayed by the U-turn position adopted by Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez. The details with Ines Kilo. A year ago, the international community witnessed Spain's reversal on the Western Saharan issue. After supporting the UN settlement guaranteeing the Sahrawi people's right to self-determination, publicly expressed throughout the voice of its Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez its support for the Mazen regime on the Sahrawi file calling for the independence of the Sahrawi Republic under its sovereignty. The possession of the Spanish government is in complete contradiction with international legitimacy, international law of free and democratic exercise by the Sahrawi people for their inalienable right to self-determination and independence. The result, one year later, inflation in Spain reached almost 11%. According to a report by the charity Caritas, three out of ten Spanish families don't have financial resources to maintain decent living conditions. We came today to demonstrate in front of the headquarters of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Spain to protest against the betrayal of the Spanish government at their head, Pedro Sanchez. No one has the right to speak in the name of the Sahrawi people if he is not a Sahrawi. As you can see, there are many people who came to protest against this heinous decision and in order to fight for the Sahrawi people's right to self-determination. The aim of this demonstration is to call the organization without delay to hold a referendum for self-determination in Western Sahara, to denounce the plunder of the natural resources of the Saharan lands, in particular through the Madrid Agreement signed on November 14, 1975, and to demand the direct participation of the Spanish government in settling this conflict in a just and lasting way. To France now, where the opponents of the new retirement law voiced their anger with further demonstrations, riots and gatherings, despite the official ban of these protest movements in several cities. In Askelou once again. By using the 49-3 article to pass the retirement law, Elizabeth Bourne's government has triggered the anger of the French people, who could not remain silent on this matter. The French Prime Minister preferred to use this article of the Constitution to pass this reform, which would not have obtained a majority if she had chosen to have it voted in the National Assembly. Mobilized for weeks against the pension reform, the French have toughened their position since the release of this article. The fear of stepping up the protest led the authorities to ban all gatherings in the Square de la Concorde near the Bourbon Palace and the Elysee Palace. 
from Nantes to Lille, through Toulon or Montpellier. The rallies are continuing. In Lyon, about 15 people have been arrested after incidents caused by groups of violent guests. On Saturday, the police arrested 169 people throughout the country, including 122 in the capital, Paris. Several key sectors of the economy remain disrupted by the mobilization, including transport and garbage collection. In Paris, almost 10,000 tons of waste are still waiting for collection. The government is planning to order the staff to start the cleaning process. For its part, the government remains inflexible and sticks its position on its widely contested pension law. According to a poll published by the weekend newspapers, Emmanuel Macron's popularity has collapsed to 28% in March, the lowest since 2019, at the end of the Yellow Vest crisis. In addition to this reform, the Elizabeth Bourne cabinet is in dire strait with the parliament, the last hope for opponents to review these reforms and bring back the situation to normal. To sports now, the national football team manager Jamal Bermadi held on Sunday a press surgery in which he harked back on the Desert Warriors' preparations for the upcoming competitions, notably the African Cup qualifiers and the double clash with Niger on March the 23rd and 27th. All the best for our national squad. And with that, all today's news edition comes to a close. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye.